This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amroli Waller. On today's Global, angry exchanges about Russia's war in Ukraine split nations attending the G20 talks. India had wanted the meeting to focus on helping the developing world, but the US said it could not ignore Russia's unprovoked war. Every G20 member, and virtually every country, period, continues to bear the costs of Russia's war of aggression, a war that President Putin could end tomorrow if he chose to do so. Russia's foreign minister accuses the West of blackmail and threats will have all the latest. Also on today's programme, a damning verdict on a missed opportunity. A public inquiry finds that Britain's security service MI5 missed a significant chance to take action that might have stopped the Manchester Arena attack in 2017. And how the Great Pyramid of Giza continues to reveal extraordinary secrets. Scientists discover a new hidden corridor. We'll show you the first pictures. Hello and welcome to BBC News. A fractious meeting of G20 foreign ministers in Delhi has ended without an agreed concluding statement because of divisions over Russia's war against Ukraine. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, said the talks were marred by Moscow's unprovoked and unjustified war. Russian officials said Moscow and Beijing had agreed to oppose what they called Western blackmail and bullying. Antony Blinken also warned China against providing Russia with what he described as lethal support. Now, still to come on today's programme, how security services in Britain missed important chances to prevent a terrorist attack in Manchester that killed 22 people back in 2017. That story is next. back to today's Global here on BBC World News. Our main headlines, a fractious meeting of G20 nations in India fails to produce a joint statement because of international divisions over Russia's war in Ukraine. And the families of 22 people who were killed in a bomb attack in Manchester in 2017 say it's devastating to know the tragedy might have been prevented. Well, let's stay with that story because a British report has found that the suicide bomb attack that killed 22 people in Manchester might have been avoided if intelligence officers had acted on information they'd received. A Libyan man, Saman Abedi, blew himself up as people were leaving a concert by the singer Ariana Grande. The report says that Britain's security service MI5 had concerns about Abedi, but that these were not discussed or immediately written up. It says that delay meant officers missed an opportunity to take potentially important action. Here's what the chairman of that uh, arena bombing inquiry has had to say. Well, that was Danny Savage. We'll speak to him again in about 40 minutes' time because uh, we continue to get uh, more reaction on that uh, major story. Now, power has largely been restored across Argentina after more than half the country, some 20 million people, left without electricity for several hours. The blackout was caused by a fire in fields west of Buenos Aires, which hit high-tension power cables and put a nuclear power station offline. One more story to squeeze in. Eurovision tickets will go on sale next week for six preview and three televised shows in Liverpool. Ticket prices start at £30 and will cost up to £380 for the grand finale on the 13th of May. Liverpool, of course, uh, chosen to uh, fill in uh, for Ukraine. I'm back with more of the headline stories here in just a moment or two. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrady Waller. On today's Global, a fractious meeting of G20 foreign ministers in Delhi ends without a concluding statement because of divisions over Russia's war against Ukraine. India's Supreme Court launches a formal investigation into the multi-billion dollar allegations of fraud at the Adani Group. And the former England cricket captain Michael Vaughan appears at an inquiry into allegations of racism within Yorkshire County Cricket Club made by the club's former bowler Azim Rafiq.
Welcome back to the programme. Now, the former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said he will find it, quote, very hard to vote for a new deal on the current Prime Minister Rishi Sunak uh, had reached with the European Union to change post-Brexit trading arrangements in Northern Ireland. Mr Johnson said he thought the new deal called the Windsor Framework was an impediment to Brexit and hoped the new arrangement with the EU would work. Here's what he said. Well, that was Nick Erdley there at Westminster. Let us catch up with all the business news of the day. Tiger's here and what do you have for us? Hello. Matthew, we've got some breaking news on the Adani Group reaching us just in the last few minutes. The family trust of Gautam Adani, the Indian billionaire who established the company, has sold shares worth almost $1.9 billion in four of its companies. So this is the first major investment in the group after allegations were made in January of accounting fraud and stock manipulation. The company denies those allegations, but they've caused more than $130 billion to be wiped off its market value since that controversial report was published by a US-based research organization. Now, the buyer of the shares, GQ, uh, G Partners, said it believes that the long-term growth prospects for these companies are substantial. Adani Group said the transaction marks the continued confidence of global investors in the governance, management practices and growth of the uh, Adani portfolio of companies. Now, all this news broke late in the day in India on the same day that the country's Supreme Court announced an independent panel to investigate the allegations, the first official probe into the claims. Earlier, I spoke to our India business correspondent, Arunodi Mukherjee, and asked about the significance of the Supreme Court's investigation. In other business today, inflation in countries using the euro currency dropped to 8.5% in February. The fall was not as big as many economists had expected, though, and that's fueling expectations that the European Central Bank will raise interest rates several more times this year. ECB President Christine Lagarde said that inflation was on track to fall much more in March due to the effects of year-on-year -year comparisons in comparison to last year's high energy prices. A US regulator has found that Starbucks illegally fired six workers in New York for being members of a trade union. The US National Labor Relations Board said the coffee chain committed egregious and widespread violations of federal labor law at its stores in Buffalo and Rochester. It ordered that the fired workers be rehired. Starbucks maintains its actions were lawful and in line with policies. And the crack cocaine of algorithms, that's how one campaigner has described the addictive quality of TikTok, well, the Chinese-owned video sharing app has more than a billion users worldwide, many in their teens. So it's announced plans to limit its use by under 18s to just 60 minutes a day, saying the measure will be rolled out in the coming weeks. Users though, will have the ability to opt out. And that's your business here on Global. Back to you now, Matthew. Time limits. Good luck with that, uh, Ty. Thanks very much. Thank you. Now, still to come on today's Global, more secrets of the Great Pyramid of Giza are revealed as a secret corridor is found in the structure. It is seen for the first time by archaeologists. Welcome back to today's programme here on BBC World News. Our main headlines, a fractious meeting of G20 nations in India fails to produce a joint statement because of international divisions over Russia's war in Ukraine. And the families of the 22 people who were killed in a bomb attack in Manchester in 2017 say it is devastating to now know the tragedy might have been prevented. Now let's turn to Pakistan where a member of the women's national hockey team has been identified as one of the 64 people who died trying to get to Europe. 29-year-old Shahadi Raza was on a boat travelling from Turkey which broke apart off the coast of Italy over the weekend. Well let's go to our correspondent Carrie Davis who's been speaking to her family. She joins me live now from Islamabad and uh, Carrie, uh, the family uh, clearly devastated but what have they been saying to you about why she made this trip? 
Matt, uh, we will leave it there, but uh, thanks for taking us through uh, what's been happening there today. Uh, another important story uh, on today's programme. We're about to take a break. I just want to uh, show you pictures from Jerusalem that are coming in to us, uh, pictures of uh, demonstrations uh, in protest uh, outside of uh, the Parliament over the new controversial justice reform bill. Uh, those are the scenes there. We will keep an eye on that story and bring you the latest in our next edition of today's Global. That's coming up in a moment or two. We're going to take a short break, but uh, please don't go away. Back in a moment. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. On today's Global, angry exchanges about Russia's war in Ukraine split nations attending the G20 talks. India had wanted the meeting to focus on helping the developing world, but the US said it could not ignore Russia's unprovoked war. Every G20 member, and virtually every country, period, continues to bear the costs of Russia's war of aggression, a war that President Putin could end tomorrow if he chose to do so. Russia's foreign minister accuses the West of blackmail and threats. We'll have the latest from Delhi. Also on the programme, a damning verdict on a missed opportunity. The public inquiry finds that Britain's security service MI5 missed a significant chance to take action that might have stopped the Manchester Arena attack in 2017. And how the Great Pyramid of Giza continues to reveal extraordinary secrets. Scientists discover a new hidden corridor. We'll show you the first pictures. Hello and welcome to BBC News. A fractious meeting of G20 foreign ministers in Delhi has ended without an agreed concluding statement because of divisions over Russia's war against Ukraine. The US Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the talks were marred by Moscow's unprovoked and unjustified war. Russian officials said Moscow and Beijing had agreed to oppose what they called Western blackmail and bullying. Antony Blinken also warned China against providing Russia with what he described as lethal support. Well, let's uh, look at the situation on the ground in Ukraine because Russia's president has accused Ukraine of, quote, a terrorist act. Vladimir Putin said a sabotage group entered a Russian border region and opened fire on civilians. Kyiv strongly denied it, calling it a provocation. Earlier, the governor of the Bryansk region, which borders Ukraine, claimed that saboteurs fired on a car, killing one person, uh, adding that the shelling had also taken place from Ukraine. Well, the incident is happening around the village of Lubichansia. Uh, Russia's FSB security service says it is trying to engage an armed group of Ukrainian nationalists who've crossed the border. The region is understood to be a base for Russian drone attacks. Meanwhile, Russia has shelled Zaporizhia city in the south of Ukraine, killing at least four people and injuring eight others. Now, still to come on today's programme, how security services in Britain missed important chances to prevent a terrorist attack in Manchester that killed 22 people in 2017. We get reaction. Welcome back to today's Global on BBC World News. Let's turn to another of our headline stories because a British report has found that the suicide bomb attack that killed 22 people in Manchester in 2017 might have been avoided if intelligence officers had acted on information they'd received. 
The review into the Manchester Arena attack found that Britain's security service MI5 missed a significant chance to take action swiftly. A Libyan man, Salman Abedi, blew himself up as people were leaving a concert by the singer Ariana Grande. Well, in the last half an hour, the director general of MI5 has been speaking. He refused to take questions, but had this to say. Danny Savage uh, there in Manchester. Thanks for bringing us the latest in terms of the reaction on that uh, major story here in the UK. I'm back in uh, half an hour's time with all the latest on all of those main stories. Hopefully, I'll see you then. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. On today's Global, terse exchanges about Russia's war in Ukraine splits nations attending the G20 talks in India. India wanted the meeting to focus on helping the developing world, but the US said it could not ignore Russia's unprovoked war. Every G20 member, and virtually every country, period, continues to bear the costs of Russia's war of aggression, a war that President Putin could end tomorrow if he chose to do so. Public anger mounts in Greece following Tuesday's deadly train crash as the number of people killed in the disaster rises to 57. A public inquiry finds that Britain's security service MI5 missed a significant chance to take action that might have stopped the Manchester Arena attack in 2017. And how the Great Pyramid of Giza continues to reveal extraordinary secrets. Scientists discover a new hidden corridor. We'll show you the first pictures. Hello and welcome to BBC News. A fractious meeting of G20 foreign ministers in Delhi has ended without an agreed concluding statement because of divisions over Russia's war against Ukraine. The US Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the talks were marred by Moscow's unprovoked and unjustified war. Russian officials said Moscow and Beijing had agreed to oppose what they called Western blackmail and bullying. Antony Blinken also warned China against providing Russia with what he described as lethal support. Were China to engage in material lethal support for Russia's aggression, uh, or were to engage in the systematic evasion of sanctions uh, to help Russia, that would be a serious problem for, uh, for our countries. It made clear that there would be consequences for engaging in those actions. Uh, so I'm not going to detail uh, what they would be, but of course we have sanctions authorities uh, of various kinds, that would certainly be one of the things that we and others would look at. And I say others because this concern that China is considering providing lethal military assistance to, to Russia, this is a shared concern. And many other partners uh, have uh, raised this, and not just raised this with us, but, it's my understanding, have raised it directly with China, including here today in Delhi. Well, that was Anthony Blinken. A little earlier, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi called on foreign ministers to put their differences aside and find common ground. Mr Modi also spoke for developing nations, saying those present had a responsibility to them. Now, the number of people killed in the train crash in Greece has risen to 57. There have been protests in the country after the crash. Demonstrators clash with police outside the headquarters of the company responsible for maintaining Greece's railways. Three days of national mourning have been declared across the country following the accident in which a passenger train crashed head-on into a freight train, causing the front carriages to burst into flames. Here's our Europe correspondent, Nick Beek. Frank Gardner, thanks very much for that assessment. Thank you. Now, do stay with us because uh, still to come on today's Global, well, another astonishing find connected to one of the seven wonders of the world. A hidden corridor in the Great Pyramid of Giza has been seen for the first time. We'll show you the pictures here in just a moment.
Welcome back. Now, the former England cricket captain, Michael Vaughan, has been giving evidence on the second day of the public hearing into allegations of racism made by the former Yorkshire player Azim Rafiq. Vaughan and five other of his former teammates are accused of using racially discriminatory language. Our sports correspondent, Matt Graveling, is following events. Well, 4,000 years old and they're still finding out new things about uh, the Great Pyramid of Giza. That brings us to the end of uh, Global. Thanks so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you at the same time tomorrow. Bye for now. Hello there. Storm Juliet is still going to give a lot of wet weather through the course of Thursday.